Yeah, back down here at Four Golf Chester, and uh, things are pretty grim in the world right now, but we're gonna carry on reviewing products, and uh, like I said, it's a very menial, uh, I don't know, it's tough to get up for this stuff at the moment, but like I said, it might provide just a bit of relief from this whole situation that we find ourselves in. Anyway, what are we doing? Well, we're gonna be looking at a Mizuno CLK range in terms of the hybrid, that is. Uh, 19 degree what I've got in my hand, but I've made a bit of a tweak on this. I've added two degrees aloft. So the standard CLK19, which is typically your sort of uh, your three hybrid with a little bit of adjustability that's in there. Uh, I've added two degrees aloft. And I'll tell you why I've done that in a bit when we talk through some of the numbers. Because I've hit this thing off camera and I found it just a little bit low in terms of the ball flight that I'd look to play in terms of uh, a hybrid in this sort of category. But we'll talk about that later, like I said. But first of all, we're going to talk price point because yet again uh, Mizuno are doing a real good job in terms of bringing in I think they've they've upped their prices don't get me wrong they're not uh, they're, they're more expensive than perhaps we'd have expected and liked them to be but they've certainly kept the seed in there in terms of compared to other brands and I think from driver in this range right the way through to the um, through to the hybrids and fairways they've kept a real good price point and rather than me quote something I'll flash something up now for you to see what in US dollars and British pounds in terms of what the general retail price is because I've only got RRP on these but it's definitely a more attractively priced product and in terms of the finish I think it's superb some images up on screen for you now I think in terms of shelf appeal I like the way that sort of uh, that cut out behind the wave technology as they call it which will all be to do with uh, ball speeds across that club face yes that's uh, in theory we'll test that very very soon but I think it looks good first and foremost Again, I mentioned on uh, on another video that of the fairways, they've toned it down in terms of the colouring. Everything's becoming a little bit muted. And from the top side, it's almost like a sort of graphite grey, again, muted finish, which I think looks absolutely stunning in hand. So it ticks a lot of boxes, but how does it perform? And I think for me, is it going to do anything that's different? Because the problem we've got at the minute, I looked at the 5 wood, and the 5 wood to me is a fantastic product, but it gives some... Well, I looked at that, not only how does it perform in terms of the Mizuno product, but how does that compare in terms of products you could possibly put in the bag. The problem they've got with this for me is that there's a lot of hybrids out there. There's a lot of already got a hybrid in the bag. So what's this going to do any different and how is it going to appeal to others in making you persuade you to swap and buy this? And for me, that's the big job that Mizuno have got in hand. So the first question before I hit a golf ball is do you need a hybrid in your life right now a new one have you got hybrids in the bag and what would it be what's going to take what's going to change things what is a hybrid going to do any different than they already do right now in terms of out there on the marketplace because surely that's the big challenge that these club manufacturers face right now anyway let's get on to it in some golf balls and collect some data and um i think like i said we're going to play it straight from the mat i think in terms of address it looks superb i like the look of it not Again, in terms of its shape, I would call it what, what I would term traditional in terms of its shape. Not to, um, I don't like this sort of, I don't know the word, that the weather, weather kind of like toe end becomes a lot higher than at the heel. It's not like that at all. And, and I like the way it sits behind the ball. Let's hit a golf ball, otherwise I'll be accused of waffling on too much. Let's see what this can do. I'm hitting the ball half decent at the minute, you know on and off course, so that's quite good. I'll tell you what I'll do, and I don't normally do this, I'll see what that's done in terms of numbers. We have a pause while it arrives. Okay, so, uh, club head speed, 86 mile an hour, uh, 3,700 spin, 197 in terms of carry. Now for me, like I said, it's a bit weaker, so a standard, three hybrid i'd be looking in around that 200 yard mark in terms of carry i've actually added like i said a couple of degrees worth of loft onto this and i'm still finding and the other numbers that i collected off camera are all in and around that sort of 195 to 200 carry and getting there with a ball flight that i like is going forward the spin number is really really good and that two degrees is a bit of big help for me because like i said if i was looking at this club in terms of what i'm finding in terms of the performance so far would it be a criticism? A criticism would be that in, in, for me that the 19 degrees was a really low ball flight and something that I was surprised at because normally with the hybrid, you're used to just seeing that ball just pop up there. And in fact, it's something that you're actually looking to sort of 
perhaps toned down a bit in terms of the ball flight. It's been complete opposite with this. I found it way too low at 19 degrees and, uh, and had to add loft to it. Let's try one more. Again, I hope you've got that. I'll actually button that thing. That's further than the first one I've just hit. The interesting bit for me is the sound and feel. And I think what Mizuno have done incredibly well, again, with all the range. Nothing felt like a Mizuno in terms of irons, but I think what I would say is in terms of the fairways, the hybrids, and into the drive, they've done an incredible job in, and it doesn't make a great deal of difference to a lot of people, but sound is really important to me, um, which is interpreted then as feel. And I think they've done a fantastic job in doing that as well. So uh, I think what I'll say is this, and I'll get to some numbers, but the only thing and the only issue that I have with these products now is it's no different than any other hybrid that I have hit. It's gonna get me to 200 yards. It does it well. It seems to be doing it quite consistently in terms of across the club face, in terms of ball speeds aren't dropping off. I've sort of collected data for 10 or 12 shots already. Um, but there's plenty of other clubs that I've done that with in the hybrid market. So that's the only thing I would say. Um, but I don't know what, like I said, are we, that's more to do with where are we at in terms of golf club manufacturing right now, because it's difficult to know where things are gonna move forward. And this certainly falls into that category, even though it's performing exceptionally well. Let's try one more. Well, I couldn't have hit them any better on camera. They're absolutely three button balls, as I like to call them. Uh, let's have a look at the data, maybe drill it down just a little bit and, uh, and see if maybe there's something I'm missing out there in terms of maybe this is doing something that uh, other hybrids aren't, but uh, I fear that uh, that isn't going to be the case. Well, it's okay, we'll make this uh, summary fairly brief. We don't need to drag this out uh, too long. And I think, like I said, let's go through the numbers and I'll throw them in front of you now. And, uh, You'll see that overall, I think the performance was fairly consistent, kept club head speed relatively uh, consistent. And when it did pick up, it had an impact in terms of uh, what ball speeds we got out. Uh, if you look at that one that creeps up to 87 mile an hour, 134 ball speed, that impacts all across the board and that 201 carry. Um, interesting one, last shot here, it's 84 mile an hour with a 134 ball speed, that's incredible. Uh, 208 carry so there's some variables in there and again a lot down to the swing of uh, and the delivery from an average golfer that launch anchor like I said on average 11.9 for me uh, it still wasn't the highest of uh, of launch in and peak height at 76 and that again did fluctuate between sort of 65 and what is it 84 so there's some variables in there but again a lot down to strike but for me uh, the spin number really good as well at that 3.8, so it was possibly like a kind of four hybrid in the end and 3.8 spin, 200 yard carry, 131 ball speeds. I mean, it's ticking plenty of boxes and it's doing everything it should be doing in terms of performance. Um, did it do anything that really sort of um, said to me and drop every current hybrid you've got in the bag and put this one in? No, it didn't. Uh, I'm afraid that it was kind of like, and that's not a criticism, that's it performed exceptionally well. If I had a 10 year old hybrid and there was nothing to swap out, then this definitely comes into the mix. And I think with that price point, it definitely comes into the mix. So they've produced a fantastic product. It performs well, but it doesn't perform any better in my hands than a lot of other products that I've tested. So uh, that's it. It's short and sweet. Like I said, uh, I hope that, like I said, I've, I've sensed uh, an element of slightly uh, downbeat in terms of, like I said, the current mood. And I apologize for that. Uh, it's not what you want to watch. I know it's, uh, we've got to make an effort to try and cheer this whole thing up. So uh, I'm about to film the, uh, a video with the driver and uh, I'll make an effort to make it a bit more upbeat, but I can assure you it's not impacted on my opinion of the product, even though that wasn't the most cheery. Uh, that's as honest and uh, as fair as an assessment as I can give it. Right, as ever, thanks for watching. And uh, more importantly, like I said, take care and uh, see you all soon.